Is your audio and video equipment letting you down? Let's talk about it today on Sounds Profitable with me, Brian Barletta. And me, Ariel Nissenblatt. This episode is brought to you by Podsites, podcast and streaming audio attribution, all in one place. Go to podsites.com for more information. This episode is sponsored by Marvel.ai ethically created and distributed synthetic voice and voice cloning. Find out more at marvel.ai. Brian Barletta, how you doing? I love I like welcoming you to your own podcast. <laughs> Our podcast. Yeah. This is ours. It's honestly great having you as a co-host. I've gotten nothing but great feedback about it, the energy you bring and the fact that you get me to slow down a little bit Hell and yeah. actually explain things. And I've already gotten some DMs, so shout out to the folks who have taken me up on getting in touch to talk about podcast ad tech and keep doing that. So shout out to you and shout out to future you for doing that. We've got a really fun, actionable, packed episode today. It's a shorter interview between you and a guest. And before we jump into it, I just want to give a little context and also play a little game to get us oriented. Uh-oh. How does that sound? Don't read ahead. Sign Okay, not reading. Let's do it. <laughs> okay, so Brian, to get folks in the mood for today's episode, to get us in the microphone mood, I'm going to have you play a game. And the game is this. I'm going to give you 10 seconds, and you're going to name as many microphones as you possibly can. One point per mic. Ian will keep score. Are you ready? I'm going to put a timer up. Don't think. Don't think yet. Okay, you ready? Okay. Oh, yeah. Set, go. Uh, Sure, MV7. Uh. SM7B, uh, PD70, um, by Personas, Personas, Done. I think. Uh, there's, that was 10 oh, seconds. It was a quick 10 seconds. That's, those are just the ones I have in my office. Well, not the <laughs> SM7B, but the other two, and that's the one everybody knows. So, yeah. So, I almost said AirPods just to be a jerk. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk in this episode about why that is not an <laughs> adequate microphone substitute. But yeah, lots of microphones out there, lots of podcast microphones, lots that are famous in the podcast community, a few that come to my head. Samsung Q2U, of course, you've got the Blue Yeti, which I am unfortunately recording with right now. Although I don't think it's that unfortunate, but you do. It Honestly, it works well for you. Yes. I think we give it a lot of hate. I don't think it would be something I'd recommend anybody buy, but your audio it's sounds fine. great. Yeah. Um, the Samsung Q2U, which you talk a little bit about in this episode. I like the ATR2100 for beginners. Um, and then, of course, the Shure SM7B, which I think you mentioned. Tons of microphones, a lot of great options out there. Shout out to my little Rode NT-USB Mini that I won from Podcast Movement. Shout out to Podcast Movement. Um, so now that we're warmed up, Brian, today you are chatting with Marcus. So tell me a little bit about how you met Marcus. So Evo introduced us because we were working on the Up Next project, which was the podcast format upfront, and I needed someone to help me edit things a little bit more complex than what me and Ian had been doing before. Ian Powell edits the every single episode of Sounds Profitable, but this was something that we had multiple guests and trying to build it up a little bit bigger. And so Marcus joined with that. It was a lot of fun. He had a lot of great ideas. And I kept talking to him about how cool it would be to really experience what multiple microphones sound like in one audio or video file, right? There was some video company I stumbled onto that showed different qualities of video uh, that you could record with their equipment and you could live switch between all three of them while playing the same video. And that was kind of the dream I had with Marcus. And Marcus said, yeah, let's do it. He got every microphone he had and he, he made this awesome presentation. We'll link to it in the episode details. And it, it really gives you a feel for how you sound because I think that's really important. I like, I'm wearing right now a brain work is real work t-shirt, but because my microphone, my headphones, and my camera look better, this has got a professional feel to it. Yeah. And that's where we are, you know, almost two years into a pandemic, we are at this point where that's the new suit. Yes. Yes. And, and Marcus really highlighted Yeah. That. That's a big, I love that quote from your conversation and we'll get there in a second. We'll let everybody experience that in real time for themselves. So Marcus wrote an article for Sounds Profitable a few months back. What is that article and where can people go to find it? So it's on soundsprofitable.com and it's all about how you sound from those seven different, I think it was seven or nine different microphones that he had access to. 
showing from Apple headphones that are plugged directly in to AirPods, to professional microphones, to distances, to untreated rooms, and all the things in between. And I think it's really important for people who are recording a podcast, but it's also really important like if you're going to be a guest on any podcast to really think through how you sound and how you come across especially if you work in the audio space. Mm. If you don't sound good and you work in the audio space, even if it's like an ad product that is never going to touch even the creative side of it, it, it's still the space we've all decided to be in and it's still how you come across. I agree. So here is how I want to prime listeners for the chat that we're about to get into and then we'll get right into it. So question for you, Brian. You already talked a little bit about why professional podcast folks, whether they're buying ads, selling ads, maybe they're not p producers themselves, why they should care about having proper mic technique and treatment of the room and all that. Why should independent podcasters who aren't yet ready to shell out for fancy equipment, why should they care about proper mic technique and room treatment? It's, you know, we always say like dress for the job you want. And <laughs> I don't love that completely. But more than anything, it's about trying to create quality content. And Tom Webster talks about it a lot. The biggest thing that you need to hone is the content you're creating, how it sounds, how the quality of what you're producing. And that sound can be off-putting. I mean, I've definitely dropped podcasts that were super interesting that just didn't hit a very bare minimum. I, I don't think I'm super sensitive on sound. Uh, Evo and Ian will constantly tell me that something doesn't sound great and I just can't hear it. But there's a big difference between you talked into the microphone on your iPhone and you talked into even a $50 microphone. That, that difference is really important. Yeah. And in my takeaways, we'll get more into how both professional podcasters who are making money and indie podcasters can benefit from even shelling out a few dollars. It doesn't have to be that much for their, whether it's their room or for their equipment or for just making their production process a little bit easier. So with that, why don't we get into the interview between you and Marcus? Awesome. So this interview is with Marcus DePaula of Podcast Audio Lab, and I had a blast speaking with him and am excited to continue working with Marcus in the future. So Marcus, one of the things that me and you have talked a lot about is that it really feels like in the ever, uh, the, the era here of the pandemic and everybody being at home, that like a good microphone and a good camera is like the new suit right? Like you have a killer setup. Yours puts mine to shame because you, I can see myself right there, which is hilarious. <laughs> it's so cool. I, on your end, do you like, do you experience every new phone call? It, people point it out and talk to you about how crispy you sound or how great you look or. Yes, I do. And it's gotten me more work because of it. It also, I, he, my wife shares an office with me and I've got her set up with my old camera and a Shure MV7. And people always, all of her consulting calls, she has like at least half a dozen consulting calls every week. And they always say, well, you look and sound so good. And she's like, yeah, I'm married to an audio engineer. <laughs> so. It's so great. Every single call I'm on the first five minutes, even if I talk to this person about it all the time, like they still bring it up. They're like, ah, there he is showing us up or yeah. he sounds so great. He looks so great. And it really does do that. And it reminds me of... um when you think of like personal trainers and stuff like yes. that, you don't want to be trained by the dude who's got a bunch of certificates, but isn't in shape. You right. want to be trained by the dude with the six pack who, yeah. who may or may not have the, the certificates, yeah. but it's a, <laughs> it's a big part about it. So, you know, I was thinking like, how, how much do you think this impacts like a company? Like you're on the freelance end, but if I'm a salesperson in podcast, ad tech and advertising, or I'm a CEO, even if it's business meetings, let alone recordings, how much do you think it, it impacts things? Well, no matter what you're doing, no matter what your profession, communication is how we get stuff done. And especially when you're a CEO and you're relying on other people, you want them to respect you. You want them to get on board with what you want to accomplish and you want them to be motivated. And as a leader, especially, but even as a salesperson, you want to come across as clearly and as professionally as possible because that speaks to your credibility like you mentioned it it speaks to just that you care about what you're doing and that you're passionate and that you're in it and people want to work with people that are in it so th that's i i feel like is what has gotten my most work is just people visually and audibly seeing how much i care about what i do 
Yeah. And, and it's a weird overlap because I think like if I was just in regular ad tech, I was doing like banner ads and TV and stuff not like that. It might not matter because the association that I could also create content, like if I sell YouTube ads, nobody is expecting me to have a YouTube channel, but right. it's not uncommon for someone who works in podcasting to have a podcast. Yes. Right. So even if you're an account manager, even if you're a support person, having a cool mic and sounding crisp or having a good video camera, these are all things that just show that you really care about this industry. Yeah. And, and that really gets people excited. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Your article was so great because it took all these different microphones and it showed people how they sound on each of them. And you did the video with it as well. And, and mm. I was really impressed with it because you compared each step, right? And the distance between them. Yeah. But we think about that on like perception. And I think about that on a call, right? Every now and then with the kids, I got to put in an AirPod and I have to take a call and I feel bad for that moment. But I've never had to record a podcast where I was on an AirPod. I guess the question on like a cost side that we don't think about mm -hmm. is what's the difference in cost and work effort for an editor if the two people are on good recording mics and not messing up that much versus one or both of them are on poor quality connections or right. poor quality mics and they have to edit it. Can you can you kind of talk through that? Yeah, I can just to answer your question quickly, but I want to touch on how much AirPods are terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but it essentially can at least double the amount of time I have to spend on making something sound good. Now, granted, I go above and beyond what other quote unquote normal podcast producers do, but I want to make sure the listeners get the best experience possible. And to go along with that, even for phone calls, AirPods are actually not good microphones. They are great for listening and consuming content, but for communicating and speaking, I don't care if you're recording it or not. If you're doing phone calls on AirPods, you are hindering your communication with the other person on the end of that line. Is it specifically AirPods or is it Bluetooth? AirPods tend to be worse than most other Bluetooth wow. devices just because they're so tiny and they're so far up there. Like even the Beats headphones sound better because they have that cable that's hanging down. Gotcha. You know, it has that okay. little loop. Yeah. And, and even though they're Bluetooth. But Bluetooth has a lot to do with it. But something about the AirPods themselves, just the, the nature of the form factor of them, they actually sound worse than other equivalent Bluetooth headsets. Huh. And they, but they have that pro moniker on there. Of course they're great. I'm a professional now that I have them. <laughs> but and how long does an hour of, like if I give you an hour of raw audio, how long does it take to edit normally? So if it's two people like us mm -hmm. having a conversation, not saying um every other word, yeah, <laughs> which we try our best try not very to, hard. but still having to make edits for the sake of flow, maybe for the sake of content for an hour's audio it can take me anywhere from at least twice that so two hours to to process and edit it up to sometimes six hours if it's really really bad audio or bad expression like lots of filler words yeah and i i tend to edit more heavily than a lot of other people do because i'm thinking about the listener i'm not just thinking about my own time and my clients are fortunately willing to pay me for that. So, yeah. So let's say, let's say the minimum or like the, the average is let's call it three hours. Then. Yes. So one hour becomes three hours. That three to one logic, I think is really good for people to get in mind when they're thinking about building podcasts and whatnot. Yes. So in that scenario, what's the average price for editing? Well, the average price is hard to say, and this is something I'm actually combating because I feel like there's too many of my peers that are not charging enough. Sorry. Well, let's talk about what you think the average price should be. <laughs> I would think that the minimum you should pay for a, a 60 minute, a one hour episode would be $200. I know okay. some people that, that do a third of that. But I charge up to $600 for an hour's worth of edited audio. So would you say that that's relatively like $100 an hour of work? Is that what you're thinking? Yes, yes. Okay, exactly. so in this scenario, we're talking $300 for that average. Yes. And with AirPods on both people, we're talking anywhere from 6 to 12 hours of work to exactly. get that done correctly. Yep. So we're, you know, that 300 versus potentially $1,200 it's one episode versus four episodes. So these are the types of things that if you buy that mic, 
and uh, we'll put the we'll put the information in the episode details. We have links to ones that are under a hundred dollars, under fifty dollars. Yeah, we're talking about less than one episode of editing, right? And everybody sounds better. So I think that that's really important for people to think about because it's valuable for all of us in the space to have a podcast, to experience it, to experience it, uploading it, finding a guest, talking on Squadcast, doing all these different things so that we can really understand the medium and then play around with the tools. That's why I love this podcast because I get to put ads in there and I get to see how it works and I get to show analytics and I get to test out everything. I, I really can't understate that value, uh, but I'm never gonna edit my podcast. So I pay Ian <laughs> to do it at great rates and he works really hard. And so every time I get on there and someone has AirPods, we just doubled his work. Yes. We just doubled what I paid him too, which is rough. And to go along with that, the other thing to consider is the medium you're using to have the conversation. There are way too many people using Zoom to record yeah. podcasts. And we obviously use Zoom a lot for meetings, but I even will use my stream, my podcast recording streaming platform for meetings because the high quality audio helps me communicate better. It is also a more pleasant experience for my clients and my prospects, but ultimately there is a lack of understanding at just how bad Zoom will mess up your audio, especially if you're relying yeah. on it to record for you. It really, really dumbs down the sample rate and all the technical aspects of the file to where it is. You take AirPods plus Zoom and it's absolutely horrendous to listen to. <laughs> yeah. And then you and you think about it like I am getting to the point where I will reconsider who I bring on as a guest if they don't have a good quality microphone because now it costs me more. Right. Absolutely. You know, and that absolutely. setup is really tough, too. If I get on there and someone says, hey, I want to record on Zoom. I'm just like, can we just use my Squadcast link? I'm very happy to just yes. give you the files Same. because I don't want to sound like that. Right. Absolutely. That's very important. Well, yep. I think we're in a really interesting spot right now where everybody's home. Mm -hmm. I think travel's going to come back again. I mean, I miss Hopefully. it. <laughs> I'm very excited to, to be fully vaccinated for my whole family. Like cool. me and my wife are, but my kids are just a little too young right now. Yeah. We're going to be in front of that line. But you know, I, I think about it constantly about before the pandemic, uh, trying to record in a hotel room and how hard that would be, whether for just solo podcasting or especially for calls. I think a lot of people give leeway to people when they're traveling and that's fine, you know, yeah. but what could I do for a travel setup when we didn't really touch on this in the article that can help with soundproofing when I'm on the go, like to make me not sound like crap and also not put a giant thing in front of my face that right. blocks my view. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. There are a lot of people that say, oh, you can crawl under the covers and put it over your head. I don't recommend that. That's, that's no. a little too like, yes, it does sound better, but you also have to think about your comfort in communicating when you're trying to express your ideas. But what I recommend is just like with at my desk setup, my second favorite podcasting mic is the Samson Q2U. The microphone choice, starting with that, it, it is it, the type of mic that it is. It doesn't pick up as much of the ambient noise. Yeah. But to speak to being in a hotel room specifically, the things you have to think about are the number one problem for me as an audio engineer in a hotel room is the air conditioner. And there, unfortunately, are a lot of hotels where you don't have control. <laughs> they give yeah. you like the little dummy thermostat that kind of is supposed to help you with the temperature, but the blower is always blowing or it just comes on randomly. But if you can turn the air conditioner off, you obviously probably need to crank it down to where it's really cold before you start the interview so you don't end up sweating by the end of it. So if you can't turn it off, then getting on the opposite end of the suite or the hotel room from the air conditioner and then facing the air conditioner because the back of the microphone picks up less noise than the the part of it that you put in front of your mouth. So that's the first thing. The second thing would be what you can do is take one of the comforters off of the bed and drape it around and kind of tie it around a couple of the hangers in the closet and open the closet doors and then get your chair and sit facing the closet and if you ha can have the doors kind of around you, so you're like in a little booth. So that you're can help speaking into the into the, the blanket. Yes, exactly. That cuts down on the reflections. 
because basically the the reverberation in a room is the excess energy that the microphone's not capturing, just kind of bouncing all over the place. So if you put that comforter in front of your face, and you can still have your computer, your iPad, or whatever, you know, in between the microphone and the comforter, you don't have to have it like right up in <laughs> up in your grill. Yeah. That way, it will absorb as much of the excess energy coming out of your mouth before it starts bouncing around the room and causing those reverberations. That's real smart. Yeah, I like that because like so many of these microphones, the Samson one that you recommend, I really like because it's so portable. Like yes. it, it's not going to take up any space in your bag. It's going to fit in whatever you're already traveling with. And so being able to put that on there, you're going to probably spend more space for a laptop stand so you can make actual eye contact and people aren't like looking up your nose yes. than you will on that microphone. Uh, but the biggest thing that I've learned is whatever app you're using, if it mm -hmm. wants to do any processing, just say no. Your yes. audio engineer wants the most raw data that they can possibly get. And Amen. the idea of an AI trying to process that for them, it's not going to end well, especially if you're paying somebody else. And that brings up another good point. Make sure you have your headphones because one of the biggest problems with audio recordings, especially in Zoom, where you can't completely disable all of the filters, is that echo cancellation, which is what happens when the sound comes through your laptop speakers when you're not wearing headphones and it gets picked up by your microphone. Zoom automatically kind of dampens down your microphone. So if you guys talk over each other, you're going to be muted and it sounds yeah. terrible. Well, I don't even know if that's Zoom. I think it's just the hardware aspect of it on a lot of uh, like Apple computers, right? Like yes. a lot of Macs. <laughs> if, yep. you, if, you, uh, if you're if you ever talking to somebody that you'd like to interrupt aggressively and they're not wearing headphones on their Mac, just talk because it mutes their <laughs> microphone because the, the speakers are picked up louder than their voices. I've learned that many times on that's dealing with people. <laughs> Dominate not the conversation. A, not my favorite life skill or anything like that, but... <laughs> You know, shitty life hacks there, I think. That's so, right. Uh, Marcus, I'm I'm so happy that you're on here. I think that, you know, we really connected on this stuff. Like, I'm not an audio guy. Like, I'm a tech guy. I love the ad tech. I love buying electronics and stuff like that. But you really walked me through a lot of this. And that video, I highly recommend everybody check it out because it really shows you how you sound. And that, like, you wouldn't get up on stage at a conference wearing something schluppy. So why are you letting yourself sound like that when you're trying to market yourself, when you're trying to talk to people that you want to buy from you, when you're trying to walk, talk with people who you want to provide support for and to trust your company? So make that investment for your team, for yourself, for whatever, and definitely check that out. Check out Marcus at podcastaudiolab.com. He runs so many cool sessions that teach you all of this. So if you want to learn all of this, and if you want to get to a point where you can hit that industry average that Marcus is setting of $100 an hour for audio editing, which I super agree with, then he's a great person to learn from and you definitely should check out his stuff. Thanks so much, Brian. It's great to be on the yeah. show. Oh, the last question that I always forget. Oh, What podcast are you listening to right now? <laughs> That's a tough question for me because I uh -oh. edit so much. <laughs> I don't listen to very much. But uh -oh. I have been listening to Evo Terra's podcast pontifications, mainly because they're very short <laughs> and I have time for those. So that's what the longer you're in the space, the more you want that short form stuff, because yeah. then we're listening to music or audiobooks because we listen to podcasts too much. <laughs> <laughs> <That's right. laughs> well, thanks again for joining me, man. Thanks, Brian. So the thing that stands out to me the most about your conversation is that Marcus sounds incredible. 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 And you do too, because he helped set Aww. up your setup. Is that right? He did. He did. He actually helped me pick every single panel in here and design exactly where to put them. Wow. And it made a huge difference. I mean, when, when this is a, I'm recording right now in my garage. It was a garage. It's now converted and it echoed like crazy. Uh, somebody told me that like wood was really great for flooring because it absorbed sound. And Marcus was just like, eh. nah, I mean, rug, a rug would be good. <laughs> Um, but now it's it's fantastic. There's next to no echo in here, and I'm sure that Ian is way happier editing the audio now that Marcus has helped me treat this space. Love it. So, yeah, we'll get into at the end where folks can find Marcus to hopefully have them get his advice. But let's get to my takeaways and action items. Like I said at the top of the show, this interview was extremely action-packed, actionable, and I think that everybody can benefit from some of the advice that Marcus gave. So, first of all, 
now that we've experienced a pandemic and we're kind of still experiencing that pandemic, it had a lot of us get familiar with our coworkers at home setups. And it's not really about fashion anymore. We don't really, you know, go into the office and say, oh, Janice always looks great. We say she does. <laughs> she really does. We say Janice has a really great at home setup. And I think Marcus talks a lot about how to improve that. And a lot of that has to do with a great camera and microphone. So, Brian, what do you use? So I actually went all out. Like for me, the biggest point was that I really wanted to like walk the walk before I started. I I wanted to do the deep dives and I wanted to do the podcast. And if I was going to step into the space that I was completely foreign to, I needed to put my best foot forward. So I use a a Sony a6400 camera with a 16 millimeter Sigma lens. And my extent of knowledge with cameras is that (laughs) I can repeat that line. Good job. Uh, And then I got an Elgato 4K cam link USB to HDMI adapter so that that can be plugged in as the video source. And then this is the Shure MV7, which is a USB microphone plugged directly in. Um, and uh, very recently, I actually bought a 27-inch teleprompter, uh, which has made my life amazing because I can look directly at the people I'm speaking to. Are you using it right now? I am, yeah. Wow. Yeah, this is a specific. I have a travel laptop that I plug directly into this, and that's when, when, when I'm not at home, I use that for everything. But when I take any calls or anything, I'm on a separate computer that doesn't have access to the same things. So it hopefully distracts me slightly less. Nice. My next takeaway is that people will increasingly expect you to look and sound good on camera and in audio, whether you work in the podcast space or not, but especially if you work in the podcast space. So I think making that investment is really important. I actually do have some fancy equipment in my closet that I really do need to get set up, and I will spend some time doing that. And this is kind of my kick in the butt. So thank you to Marcus and Brian. And and I think that's important, too, because showing that you're invested in the industry that you're in, right, even slightly right like that you have a microphone you have a camera you're interested in being a creator you understand the process which then leads to you know how to upload it to a hosting platform you may know how to put ads in there you may understand the plight of the people that we're selling to for a lot of us in the business side it's just real appealing right there was ray palermo at megaphone who's one of my favorite people there when i worked with her and she was one of the few people at megaphone that had a podcast And her microphone and her camera always sounded great. And she was talking to publishers all day long. And it just, it resonated with them. And I think that's really important as we grow in this industry. It's a big difference from many of the other industries out there. And while appearance is very important, perception, what you look like on camera, how you sound, I think we also have to talk about practicalities. And one of the best ways to sound good that people don't think about very often because it's not intuitive is that you should always be wearing headphones when you're in production and marcus talked a bit about that but airpods airpods don't cut it they do not cut it for production they cut it for listening to when you're consuming content but they're not even great when it comes to taking phone calls and i found that super interesting definitely the microphone on it i mean if you don't want the the giant headset on your head you, you can probably get away with using them to listen and talking through a better microphone But one of the things that you hit on there, I just want to explain to people, I I don't think video is necessarily needed for a podcast, No, right? I I think it adds value, but if you're not comfortable being on video, if you're not in a place where you can share, we've all been moved around um, with this pandemic. It's okay to turn your video off and and work needs to normalize that. It's not a problem to be voice only on a call, especially if your voice sounds good, right? I I think it adds an extra layer there. It shows professionalism. It shows you're not out walking your dog which some meetings, it's a great time to do it. Others, it's not. But I want to admit something fully. I shaved my head at the start in this pandemic because I was on so many video calls and I was my hair was thinning just in the front, just enough to annoy me every time I saw my own picture in the camera. And I got over, I shaved my head and I worked, but people need to treat themselves first, right? They need to take care of themselves. And I don't think anybody has an obligation to see you on a call. I, I think very recently we were just dialing into phone calls too. So that's why a $50 microphone in a room that isn't super echoey, or even if it is, and talking very closely to it and trying to manage that is is not asking for too much, I don't think. Yeah, I have a friend who I am on calls with a bunch throughout the week, and she says after X number of calls per day, the rest are camera off. She just can't do it after a while. And I love that line in the sand, and I definitely want to implement it for myself. (laughs) You just get tired. You just get tired having to constantly... Because you feel you feel the need to look at yourself and, you know, 
whether or not you should be looking at yourself, I'm doing it right now. I should not be. But yeah, I think I need to every once in a while take the phone outside, go for a walk. A lot of my meetings can be audio only. And that's that. Yeah. And the ones that that need a little bit more pizzazz, you got your cool microphone and your cool camera and you can make it happen. The next takeaway for me goes in a different direction, goes in a money direction, but it can be expensive Uh to have shitty equipment. You wouldn't think it because it's cheap usually to not shell out. But if you're using AirPods and you're speaking into your laptop with no mic, you're paying way more in post-production. Marcus even gave some numbers there. So an investment of a 50 to $100 mic will go a really long way. Yeah, it'll reduce that editing cost is every single time to the point where some people might start rethinking having guests on who don't have a good mic. Right. And that's okay. We have to produce quality content. We have to hold people to a certain level at a certain point. Great thoughts aren't enough to carry it. We need to we need to really meet the medium where it is. Yeah, and I think that even if you're not paying an editor to edit your podcast, it's still your own time, right? So if you have audio that doesn't sound great and you're sitting there in post-production and you have to remove all sorts of static sounds and other things that come along with recording with AirPods or just speaking into your laptop, you're spending a lot of time in post-production for yourself. So make it a little bit easier. Spend the $50 to buy a Samsung Q2U. Spend $100 to buy the ATR2100. Whatever it is, you will thank yourself later. Completely agree. And then my next takeaway is that I love the point about the hotel room. You might sound great if you're in a blanket fort and it might be cozy and comfortable, but at what cost? (laughs) You are, maybe you're on a call with somebody important and you're like, hold on just a second. I got to get into my blanket fort. What, you know, do you really want to be doing that? So you got to make sure you feel comfortable and confident. And there are other ways. And Marcus spoke to those other ways, like opening the closet door, speaking into the closet. That helps you a little bit here and there. There are things to do when you're on the go and you're recording. Smart tips to have available. Right now, I don't have the air conditioner on. And even though it is fall, I am in Texas and it is warm in here. Same with New York for some reason, even though we're in mid-October. It is hot. My last takeaway for today's episode, and I think that this is the takeaway that I will bring up in some capacity forevermore on this podcast every episode, because it is just so important, is that there are so many podcasts out there. Your show must stand out. There is no other way. And the bare minimum is having a podcast that sounds excellent. And that's to say nothing of the content that you're producing, but you've got to sound really good. And if you're using visuals, you've also got to look really good. It doesn't work anymore in this day and age to have a podcast where you're recording with your phone. You could do it. You could have a lot of fun, you know, just recording with your friends here and there. But your show has to stand out because chances are there are other podcasts in your niche on your topic with people who are similar to you and yours needs to stand out by sounding great. And the way you do that is by investing a little cash in a great microphone. Well said. Well, those are my takeaways, Brian. Um, Anything that I missed that you feel like you want to hammer home a little bit more? No, I think you nailed it. I think Marcus did a great job explaining all that. Uh, I'm very excited how accessible Marcus is for people who want to learn editing or have a room audit or anything like that, because these are things that people don't think about as services that you can reach out to and, and, and work with and, and have your situation kind of reviewed. So please take Marcus up on that. Uh, take Ariel up on that. Definitely don't take me up on that because I call other people for help on it. But it's, it's very important how you sound in this space matters. Yeah. Especially if you want to be taken seriously by the people in this space. Yeah. And you can find Marcus on Twitter at me only louder. He's great. Such a good handle. It's a really great handle. And if you write to him, he'll write back. Before we wrap up, here's what's happening this week in the world of podcasting with James Cridlin at Pod News. This episode is sponsored by Veritonic. Know that your audio marketing resonates with consumers. Find out more at veritonic.com. If you want to connect or have questions or comments, feel free to reach out to us on social media at Sounds Prof News, at Brian Barletta, or at Ari This and That on Twitter, podcast at soundsprofitable.com for email, or you can reach out to us via the Yappa link in the show's description. This show is recorded with Squadcast, which has remote video recording, Dolby mastering features, screen share and high def and real time transmission of all those files so you don't lose a single thing. 
Go to squadcast.fm for a trial and check out all of our product deep dives as well, which are recorded using Squadcast. And make sure you check out the private feed if you haven't already. It's on Supercast. And you can get access to narrated articles and early drops of the interview episodes. There's a link in the episode description. And now in Spanish. I know, Brian, we had a goal to say goodbye in a different language every time, but it's getting embarrassing. So I'm just going to say bye, Brian. Bye, Ariel. (laughs) 